All right, as usual, every week so far anyway, we've had Cliff doing GM tips. And this week is a little bit different, but still GM tips. He's got some tips uh, for for people who, GMs who might be a little uninspired for their session this week. So, Cliff, why don't you uh, take it from here and, uh, and, and tell people what you've been thinking. Thanks, Bobby. Well, I wasn't feeling very inspired by any of the ideas I was coming up with for a video topic this week. I have lots of good ideas, but nothing sparked me as terribly interesting. Uh, the feeling just wasn't there. And that got me thinking about the times that I go into a session as a GM and I'm just not feeling inspired. Uh, some of those sessions have turned out to be among my best sessions ever. And that gave me the idea for what may well be one of my best video topics ever. You have a game session coming up and you're the GM, but today sucked and you're just not looking forward to running the game. You don't want to skip the session, but you just don't have the energy you normally bring to the table. You can do it. I have three tips to help you get through those low energy sessions. And stick around until the end of the video for an empowering bonus tip. Tip number one, tell your players that you're feeling a bit low. You don't have to hide it, just to reassure them that you want to GM the session, but share that you aren't 100%. If you feel safe discussing your personal life with your group, just take a few extra minutes, even up to half an hour, um, just to hang out and chat with your friends. This takes a lot of pressure off of you. I feel responsible for making sure that everyone has a good time when I GM, and that's often a good thing, but sometimes if I don't feel like I'm giving my best, I can get down on myself. It's not just that my cool ideas didn't work, it's that I failed my friends who are depending on me for an amazing shared experience. I hate letting my friends down or feeling like I let my friends down. And if I just open up to them about not feeling great, then I really don't feel the pressure to give my best performance ever, and they know what to expect. It also lets the players know that the ball is in their court. It's up to them to bring the excitement and energy. Tip number two, encourage your players to role play scenes with each other. If you can get your players going discussing plans for the future, reminiscing about past adventures, pondering a moral dilemma, or revealing something about one of their characters, they will do the heavy lifting for the scenario. To get this going, try to think of a question that might get them started. Uh, pick a location that the characters would likely be hanging out together, and set the scene and ask the question. Uh, I'll give you an example. Last night was pretty rough. You're all hanging out together at the matchstick in downtown Seattle, rain pouring down outside with unusual aggression. A soft, slow saxophone fills the room with mournful melodies, punctuated by the occasional chord change on the piano. How are you all feeling about the way things went down? Are you talking about it? Uh, Kenji, what are you doing? So in that example, I picked an established location, added the rain to match my mood. Since I always mention what live music is happening in a scene at the matchstick, I had an extra layer of atmosphere to lay out without having to think too hard. Then I asked the players about their feelings. Instead of waiting to see if someone would pick up the ball and run with it, I picked one of them and I dressed them in character by name with the classic GM question, what do you do? Then sit back, let them talk it out. The players should get the scene rolling and you'll probably get some great spontaneous moments. Don't check out, sit back and pay attention. Relax and hang out while the players reveal their thoughts and feelings. Usually they'll say or do something that sparks inspiration for you. Take note of whatever it is they said. Don't jump into the action right away. Just let the scene play out for a while until it seems like everyone's more or less done interacting. The goal of a scene like this isn't to simply stall for time. Don't get me wrong, it works great for that too but it's also valuable to have some low action, thoughtful character interactions. Give your players space to reflect on the events of the campaign in character or to explore the relationships among their characters and the world they inhabit. It's a great way to enrich the experience for everyone. Tip number three, slice of life. Again, rely on your players to bring the story. Explore their lives outside of what happens during their adventures. Even if you're in the middle of something, you can always do a flashback scene to a quieter moment before. It can be a great way to break up the action, and it's easy to pick up again where you left off. You can also have the players' lives intrude in an ongoing adventure. The Ecology actual play that I ran includes plenty of examples of this. 
especially early on with Kenji's mom. Kenji was a teenager, and his single mother would often check in with him during a shadow run. It started out almost as a gag. Why are you at a shadow run at a school night? <laughs> but it wasn't long before Kenji's mom became a beloved NPC. I've got other examples. Frank the Ghoul, Kit's brother Wisp, Maverick's brother, Tiny's Fixer. I always had plenty of NPC entanglements I could pull into the story with ease. If your world isn't already populated with interesting NPCs that have an important connection to the players, slow down and take some time to develop them. You can also ask your players if their characters have any personal plans or goals that they would like to work towards. I've improvised whole Shadowrun sessions based on one of the player characters deciding to steal something they couldn't otherwise afford. I think one of those runs was for a cyber deck and another one was a whole vehicle repair facility. Good times. Giving your players extra time to explore their goals and execute their own plans is a great way to enrich your campaign and keep a game moving forward even when you don't have much to give. And now for my bonus tip. Sometimes you're just not up for running a game. Maybe you're better off just postponing the session, watch a movie instead, or break out a board game. It is okay to cancel plans as long as you get people as, as long as you let people know ahead of time. Don't just ghost your group or make up some fake excuse. Just say you're not feeling up for running the game, and your players, your friends, should respect that. But if you're determined to press on and get a game session in, I think you should go for it. I always feel so much better after spending time playing games with my friends. Now, I'm willing to bet that every one of us has gone into a game session feeling uninspired. Um, Opti, how do you deal with it? <laughs> uh, I, well, like you said, like sometimes I will just say, you know, I'm not into it because I think my players deserve something better. But I hardly ever prepare ahead of time anyway. And so I usually just bring an extra level of... Um, uh, spontaneity to it right i just sort of turn on turn on the charm and uh make everything sort of bombastic and out there and pink mohawk as much as i can uh that seems to overcome a lot of my um lack of preparation or a lot of my lack of enthusiasm you just push back with extra energy that you're not really yeah. feeling but that it hopefully sparks it and gets it going right and usually the players will the, the energy that you bring to the table will be matched by the by the players like if, if you guys have a good rapport um i found this at conventions and in my home group right and sometimes like you said the players themselves are not as into it as maybe uh, they would otherwise be if you have like a weekly group or something like that you know just feel the energy uh, and i like what you said sometimes it's say hey you know i'm not feeling it tonight why don't we just hang out and and eat uh public sushi or whatever <laughs> For a local <laughs> sushi expert, uh, Bobby, when you were running the complex action game, I remember there were a number of times you confided in me that you were having some trouble just running the game on one level or another. So I'm yeah. betting there were some sessions where you went in feeling not great about it, but we had, like, I think every single session of that game was just <laughs> full of great times. Um, so how did you go about it? Because I couldn't tell. Um, well, I was, uh, I was blessed with amazing players. Um, I am also really bad at accepting compliments. So uh, you'll hear me deflect to people like you. Uh, but no, really, really, though, in all honesty, it's, um, you have to trust your players and you have to talk to them. And, and uh, I did something more akin to what like my campaign was very planned out for sure, but what I did to run things was very akin to the tip that you gave about um, g drawing inspiration from your players and and whatnot. So I would let um, characters' backgrounds take over and and spend a session, you know, oh, I ha either I haven't had time to prepare as much this time for what's going to be happening, or or I'm just not feeling great, so I'm just gonna see what you know uh, payday or wanted to do that was a character in the you know what let's let's talk about his past and 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 see if we can see if something goes from there and that's a really good tip is to really lean on your players it's you as as the gm are often expected to be like you said responsible for everybody's fun but but you make the excellent point that it doesn't have to be that way. Everybody's playing this game together. So um, ask people what they want to do, you know, 
I did that a lot too. Oz, what would you do when you were going into a join the anarchy session and um, just not feeling as much of doing it like doing it as the other times? Um, you know, it's weird. I, join the anarchy was a special one where because I just came to the table with nothing and I knew that I had the amazing support of both my cast and my audience that I could just mine for ideas and then to get them going that I was usually I was usually okay but I think the main takeaway that I got from your tips which I full heartedly agree with is to put it on the players to explore themselves because sometimes when the thing that will always get me sometimes though is when even on join the anarchy is when I didn't know what I really wanted to do or explore. Maybe the plot's been chugging along so much that I'm mm -hmm. like, I just don't know where to even take it. It's overwhelming for me. That happens sometimes where it's not that I'm like uninspired. It's just that I can't there's, it's been muddled so much in my head that now I'm like having a hard time parsing. What's the nugget that I want to get to, to drive the story to its next awesome location. And so when that happens, players' backstories and emotions and like their processing of, of, of how things are going can take a back seat. So it's great to just be like, hey, let's slow down. Let's set an atmosphere and a mood and just ask a leading question or set up like a very innocuous seeming NPC, you know, just wants to talk to you about something that we haven't talked about yet and then watch everything just kind of flow because that i think also helps the players better um center themselves and their motivations for what's going to come up next in the plot so you're not always just in charge of driving everything forward mm -hmm. the players then get to kind of give that extra bump yeah i think um yeah, relying on your players is, is a really nice thing. It's nice to be able to shift some of that weight of responsibility of the game around so so everyone can carry it together. Um, that, that's something I think uh, took away from both the things you said and uh, yeah, something I believe myself, so it's nice to hear that echoed. Uh, well, let's wrap that up then. Uh, thanks so much for joining us for this, this discussion. I expect many of you out there will have something to add. What do you do when you aren't up for GMing? Can you think of any examples of great game sessions that happened even though you weren't at your best? Do you have a tip that I should have included in this video? Whack them down in the comments.